over 50 years ago, a number of people in Guatemala from three different towns heard the Lutheran Hour and asked the Lutherans to come and visit them with the view of starting a mission. One of the people was Mr. Vasquez, who was a casket maker in the town of Sacapa. He took one room of his house, moved all his work out in the yard and in the street, and let his family live in the other room. And the first room, he built pews and called it the Lutheran Church of Sacapa. Sacapa was a town of cobblestone streets in the middle of the Matawa River Valley, which was a desert area. One of the villages was called Magay, and out in that village, this gentleman allowed us to stand in his yard and preach to his neighbors. And the Bogan view there was just beautiful in his yard. That town was a town of ox carts, and very often at night, the oxen would go up the street pulling their carts, and sometimes there was a lantern slung between the two oxen on the yoke, and their shadows on the walls made them look like great big brutes. It was beautiful to watch. These are some of the children in the first home that was rented to be used as our chapel. And we have many children in Sunday school and many people in church. That Matawa River Valley had marvelous dry areas, but the cactus there was simply immense and beautiful to watch. Sometimes on top of one of the hills surrounding the town was called Mira al Mundo, see the world. You could see the entire valley lay out before you and the Matawa River, of course, coursing through the valley with just green strips on either side of the river because there was the only water in that desert where it rained only two inches a year. Sometimes the missionary would bring his jeep down from Guatemala City and we would ride through the countryside. And as you see, the road had fences on both sides and the fences were simply long rows of cactus. This was the first confirmation class in the city of Sacapa. The people in that town lived in adobe houses, and here we see some workmen making adobe brick. The children in that yard many times lived in homes of adobe. And you can see the Sunday school leaflets that were sent from America, even in English, with the Bible pictures on them. Now we move down the railroad track, following the Matawa River down to the Atlantic coast and Puerto Barrios, down through jungle country. Sometimes we took a plane, and you will see that that airplane was gassed up when workmen climbed on the wing of the plane to pour the gasoline out of these barrels into the gas tanks. Really a dangerous operation. And it was always dangerous flying in that plane. Sometimes as the train stopped from one station to another, the men would jump out of the train, climb a palm tree, and lower the coconuts with a rope and sell them on the train and people would have a fresh drink. Other times when the train stopped at the villages, the ladies would come out to sell things. Of course, the train took 12 hours to go the 200 miles from Guatemala City 
down to Sakapa, and finally to Puerto Barrios on the coast. The vicar from the seminary helped the men go out in the woods and cut down poles, and we began to build our first church, which was a palm thatch chapel. And there you see them thatching the roof. Very interesting operation. Sometimes you could look up through the roof and see little bits of sunlight. And at the same time, when it rained, and it rained over a hundred inches a year in Puerto Barrios, the rain would drain right off the roof and hardly ever leak through inside. And so this was our first chapel. Mrs. Keene, a public health nurse, ran a well baby clinic, and we hired Dr. Rodriguez once a month to examine the children and to see how well they were growing. Many years later, yes, 30 years later, Dr. Rodriguez became the head of all the children's hospitals in the country of Guatemala, a network of four large hospitals. And so a mighty ocean of love grew also from that well baby program. Ladies from all over New England, New York, and New Jersey sent boxes and boxes of school things. And here we have them piled up. Within a year or two, we were able to build our first permanent building. And we even had a bell tower using an old railroad bell from an engine. And there, we finally added one, two, three, four school rooms. What a wonderful thing to see.